all's well. Um, my darling Eric, if you would uh, let me know if this is working, or or someone out there, uh, once there's someone there, you can tune. In, you can let me know in the chat if uh, if everything is uh, working on your end, and if it isn't, I guess I'll know pretty soon. I mean, at least within the next ten minutes, I'll probably know. Um, yeah, so uh, today is, it's a stream day, it's a Twitch stream day, and um, yeah, now I'm really, really worried. Okay, okay, I okay, no, it's fine, everything's fine. Um, I'll just stream for the next 10 minutes, and if someone comes um, into the room, you can just chat me, and then I'll know. I'm going to pretend like there's 500 people in here. Um, so yeah, I have a new like tech toy, which is really exciting. I have a little thing called Stream Deck. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see it, Look at this little thing. It's like a little button, a little button tool. And um, I just I just did something to it that it didn't like. Um, and it I can do stuff with it. I can like open windows and move things around and play sound effects like like this. Oh, no, not yet. Okay, hi. Hi, Carol and Rhonda. Hi. The OG. The originals. How's it going? Um, yeah, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, today is really exciting because today we're going to talk about quilts and fashion. And so what I'm hoping is that some uh, folks who haven't tuned in yet will tune in. Because I think today in particular, well, I don't know, every stream has been really interesting. I mean, some of you have said so, so I know some of you feel that way. I certainly feel that way. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just like this show, you know? I kind of like the show, I like to, to do this thing. So um, I'm hoping that, hey, hi Vang in me, Vang in me, the Jean me. No, it's Michelle, okay. <laughs> good. You said that right there. Hi, Michelle. Um, good, good, Carol. So, yeah, I'm hoping uh, some people join who may who may be new here because the quilts and fashion topic is so interesting and and there's just a lot to say about it. I mean, I even have notes today, um, even though I'm going to be learning along with Hey, just so viv. Um, I'm going to be learning along with you because I always do. Um, <laughs> Michelle says they won't let me change. It, they won't let her change her name, you know. I, I still have a, a screen name from like my college days somewhere floating around, you know. Um, yeah, there's, I'm gonna learn along with you as I go through quilts and fashion, go through this topic a little bit, kind of tease out some of the things that, um, you know, that are so controversial about quilt using quilts as material in clothes, right? And this and yeah, well, you know, this topic is, um, is, is near and dear to my heart because I love quilts and I love fashion, you know, up to a point. Um, and it's, it's just a fascinating intersection of those things. Um, and I'm, I'm so interested in it that I pitched uh, a lecture to QuiltCon, to the Modern Quilt Guild. And I do lectures every year, but, um, but I've been wanting to do quilts and fashion for a long time. And so in 2022, in, at QuiltCon, I'll be doing quilts and fashion. Uh, I forget what the lecture is called, but, but it's on quilts and fashion. And, and so I'll be, so, so I'm talking about this because, you know, it's a perfect example of why I want to live stream. You know, when I do the lecture, it is, I mean, if I may say so myself, and I can, that is a, an extremely polished, 50 minutes and I always go over and I have to I have to try not to do that it's it's not cute uh, at this point but you know it's a highly polished 50 minutes of, of a show, you know a presentation right it's it's practiced it's very specifically you know gone through but I can never say what I want to say and share what I know in 50 minutes right I always go over and so as I'm researching this topic, as I'm thinking about it and, you know, being able to talk to you, being able to get like your thoughts on this. I mean, this is what this platform is all about. You know, I, we can talk about quilts and fashion and, you know, discuss things and turn it over in our minds as long as we want. Um, so there's no time limit. And 
you know, I've been trying different times this week. Carol knows. Carol was up late. And so was Rhonda, I think. And so was Michelle. You guys, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I tried a really early morning time stream. I'm going to try streaming tomorrow and Friday. Anyway, I'm trying all these different things. And maybe, maybe one of the times is going to be best um, to do consistently. I don't know. But if we talk about quilts and fashion as long as we want, and as long as we want uh, is like five hours, then at some point, I mean, you know, people who couldn't make 11 a.m. Central, they're going to be able to make later. Um, I'm going to pull these shades because I'm afraid it's going to get hot. And I don't like that. It's cool here. It's cool in London. I'm wearing a sweater. Did you notice? It's crazy. Well, I say that and, and I'll probably like start, you know, baking or something. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Um, so, so yeah, so, you know, we're going to talk about that. And, and for the people who are new, um, whether you're new now or you're watching this on the playback, um, you know, I have an intro. I have a, I have kind of a preamble that I want to say <laughs> that, you know, if you have been here, you've heard before, but, um, and I guess I said a little bit of it, but my, my curiosity is boundless. I really like to explore things, learn things. The more I learn about pretty much anything, the more I realize, I don't know, I don't know anything. <laughs> like just the older I get, you know, the less I know. I think George Harrison said that, or he was quoted as saying that, um, the longer I live, the less I know, something like that. So um, when I was younger, I, I, I was fine with quilts. They were fine, you know, they were great. They're great. That was a big part of our family story, you know, quilts. Um, hey, Diane. Hey, Amy. Hey, what's up? We got the crew. We got the Twitch crew. We should have a name for us, a name for the chat. There's this one channel I watch on YouTube and, and she calls her chat Chatonda. Like, you know, the chat is a being, you know, called Chatonda and I love that. Uh, so we have to think about, about what our name is. But when I was growing up, you know, like I had quilts in my family and they were cool, but quilts were what my mom did for work. And so, you know, I was doing my own thing. My sisters were doing their own thing and quilts really didn't, they didn't feel like something we wanted to do you know, or, or do with mom because it would be like working with mom. Hey, Bib Palumbo, hi, welcome. I don't know, you might be new here, but I'm really glad, I mean, and I'm really glad you're here. You might be new here and I'm really glad that you came by because um, today's gonna be really good. Today, I've, I mean, yeah, today's gonna be cool. So yeah, I didn't get into quilting till I, the way I say it, until my life fell apart. I was 28 years old. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis and I was really sick. Like it had gone undiagnosed for a long time and I was scared to talk about what was wrong with me, you know, because it was getting really bad really fast and it was like bathroom stuff. So I was like, eh, I'm fine, this is fine. And it was not fine. And uh, so I was really sick and I went through the hospital nightmare for a lot of years and I was married, I got divorced, bad. And I made a quilt in that time. And the way I like to say it is, I realized that when life as you know it is torn into a million pieces, it makes perfectly good sense to tear up perfectly good fabric into a million pieces and sew it back together again. So I was like, oh, okay, I wanna make a quilt. And like so many of you, I mean, if you're here, you're probably like, well, obviously, like, cause if you make a quilt and you, and it's good, you know, and, and I mean, if you're like forced to make a quilt, you know, by your mean aunt or something, you know, you might not enjoy it. But if you make it because you want to make it, you know, chances are pretty good. You're going to want to make another one. Right. And so that happened to me. I wanted to make another one. And I started making quilts and then I started working with my mom. And a few years ago, you know, I, I got so busy with grad school and Quilt Folk magazine, very dear to me. And I hadn't, I hadn't made quilts in a long time, partly because of that. Yeah, it is therapy. It's, it's extraordinary therapy. I've been sewing a lot uh, lately, hand quilting actually. Um, 
And but part of the reason I didn't make quilts for a while is because I was reading about them and I was thinking about them. And the more I thought about them, the more I realized, hmm, there is a portal uh, that is sort of shaped. I'm always trying to find the right imagery for this. There's like this portal into the whole wide world and it's like wrapped in a quilt or something like that. I don't know how to say it. And I've, I'm a writer, so I really have to figure it out eventually. But um, quilts provide this like portal into everything I want to know about. There's, yeah, yeah, got into quilting at 28 too, Amy. Love that. I mean, don't like that you went through a hard time, but yeah, that's, that's five years you've been making quilts. And yeah, I have to think of, I have to rem remember to say something else about, about what you just reminded me of. But um, I, I really like thinking about, you know, like you know, art. <laughs> like I like thinking about art. I like to see art. And quilts have a really interesting, um, hey, just so that, okay, oh well, yeah, you, you were here earlier. Yeah. Um, sorry, I don't know if I should look at the chat or not look at the chat, because when I look at the chat, I get really happy, but then I stop saying what I was saying, and I don't know what just, you know, I don't know. I'm learning how to do this. But I like thinking about art. I like um, going to see art. And quilts have such an interesting place in that, in that conversation, in that world. Are they art? Are they craft? Who decides? You know, I love that. And so, so when I talk about quilts, I get to talk about art and think about art. Uh, I never knew that I was interested in economics as a topic. And believe me, my interest, you know, it's, it's limited. <laughs> I don't want to think too much about economics, but you know, how much a quilt is worth? Like how much is a quilt worth? This is a very, very interesting question because it's impossible really to put a, a monetary value on a quilt. And, and I'm sure, and I would love, this is why having the, the chat, you know, f full of people, uh, people who wanna, you know, be involved, talk to each other, talk to amongst yourselves. This is what's so valuable about this platform because, you know, when I think about how much a quilt costs, you know, it would be great to, to know how much you all have sold a quilt for, or, you know, you know, what you think, what you think about these things. So, you know, how much you, you, uh, what price you could put on a quilt is just, it's just really, it's really hard to answer because a quilt is not, it's one of a kind. You use your time to make it as much as you use fabric and thread. Both of, both supplies are, you could get them for free, really pretty much anywhere. You could scam clothes off your you know, husband's back or your wife's back or whatever, you could use an old sheet. I mean, you could really make the thing with very, very little money, but the time that it takes to make it and the, the thought that it takes to make it, how much is that worth? And is it an original design? Do you own it? All of this stuff. And that gets into the law. Quilt patterns, public domain, copyright. This, this is part of the quilt discussion as well. And so, you know, there's a lot to say about it, including, you know, fashion. By looking at quilts, I can look at fashion in a, in a very, um, very specific way. And lastly, what I'll say is that quilters are like the best people. <laughs> We're like the best people ever. Um, but, but also doing quilt folk, right? And I was editor in chief for a long time. Um, indeed. Um, and I stepped down to do other stuff like this, you know, and I'm still working with quilt folk on lots of projects, but I, but I wanted to step away from the really intense work of making the magazine to do things like this. So at, at quilt folk, you know, we would go, we go state by state investigating quilts and the culture of, of quilts in America. And every time we made an issue, I got to learn about that state. <laughs> like when would I, hey RSK, um, and, or RS Quilty, I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Um, I'm just going to call you RSK and it's just going to be the way it is. Um, I got to learn about Vermont. I got to learn about Southern California because researching for those places 
it's, it's, it's intense. You know, you really look at the place and then you go to the place. Quote folk, we go to the state and take pictures and meet people. And so anyway, it was just an incredible, incredible time. And, and I, 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 I hope to actually do that part of it again someday. So that's why I'm here. And that is hopefully why, why you're here too, because maybe you're sewing, maybe you are, um, I don't know, hanging out, just doing this and that, you know, maybe, I mean, it's 515. I don't know if it's later. We had a gal from Australia here the other day. I can't remember who it was. If you're the Australia gal, let me know in the chat. Um, if it's later where you are, I hope you're having a glass of wine. I might have a little Prosecco over there. I might, I might have, I might have poured a little bit over there. Um, I did. Okay, I, did. <laughs> I might have a sip. But I also have. Oh, by the way, and we like chips and things here. But I don't have chips. If Eric, Eric, if you're watching, I love Quote Folk too. Palumbo. Um, I think Columbo when I look at that. Anyway, um, Eric, if you're out there, we're out of chips, which I cannot believe. It's probably because you're gone that we don't have chips. <laughs> you're in DC right now and uh, it's, yes, um, yeah. So I couldn't believe it when I went to the, the pantry when we didn't have chips. Scandal. So I have some rice cakes, which I like. Balsamic vinegar rice cakes are actually really great. And cheese. But it's not chips. So I hope, whatever you're doing, you have some chips. Um, so here we go. I, I do feel a little warm. I do feel a little bit warm. I'm going to change my shirt. Not on camera. Because I don't want to be hot. I don't want to be distracted. Okay? Hang on. Hang on, I have a, a be right back screen. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'm back. This is a much lighter. Now you want chips. Hey, if you if you tune into this little program, you got to be careful. Because I don't know, I just like chips. I need snacks. I need, I need snacks. Okay. So here's what's up. So I need to learn a lot about quilts and fashion. And I know a fair amount. I know a fair amount. But I, I do want to get your thoughts on this and where I'm going to start. I made some notes. Um, cause it's such, it's such a wide ranging topic. I mean, it's just, it's just so, there's so much to say about it. Um, that I had to kind of give myself a through line and, and like, if you've been here before, you know, like huh, who knows where it'll go. It might go here or there, whatever. And that's the point because we're talking and we're thinking and stuff like that. Uh, it just happens to be about quilts, right? Um, so Carol has cookies. You can have cookies. You can have both, actually. Anybody, if anybody's wondering, you can have Prosecco. Don't mind if I do. Hmm. So I didn't have a, I mean, I have a wine glass, but it was a little conspicuous. Anyway, so there's a thing going around called cottagecore. It's a trend. I will put it in the chat so you can see if you don't, I mean, pro probably you've heard of this or, or I don't know if you haven't cottage core is like, it's a trend. It's, it's the name for a fashion trend, a, a home deck trend that in fact, let me just Google cottage core for you. I have a lot of stuff pulled up for you today. Cottage core. 2021. Cottage core is a trend that is, um, <laughs> it's, it, think, um, uh, bonnets and, um, prairies and Laura Ashley 
and um, you know, stu overstuffed sofas. It's a little bit 80s in, in, in terms of like the, the prairie dresses and things were really, hey, Cora's quilts, hi, hi. Cottagecore comes into this discussion big time and it's extremely timely, okay? June 18th, 2021. Um, so this this article is extremely new, and it's it, it's been it's been going on for a minute. But cottage core, and, and you know, just in case my internet was slow while I'm streaming, which I think it it may be. I have a ton of stuff loaded up in previews. I have a million images to go through with you that are not online, just in case my internet is weird. So you know, cottage core is this is this trend of you know prairie dresses um you know feminine ultra feminine uh kinds of things i'll just you know read this out of all the aesthetics instagram made famous lately cottage core is probably my favorite this writer is saying this um peasant silhouettes okay soft floral patterns earth tones um jane austen i would say laura ashley uh soft and ethereal um, yes, and she says, you know, it, it started resurging back in 2020. And she goes on to say, um, she, from what I can tell and what many writers talk about or fashion, you know, reporters talk about is that the pandemic had a lot to do with this. People were home. People were scared, right? They were freaked out about everything because it's a pandemic. Like, n none of us on the planet had dealt with a pandemic before of course we're still dealing with it but this idea that you would want comfort and and that you would want to be outside running through a meadow you know had a lot to do with people say people believe this this aesthetic look at this I mean it's it's fully like pioneer <laughs> it's fully like I don't know it's 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 this you know and and as you can imagine you know just hate this I just, you know in London in Chicago in New York but but really in London the Instagrammer uh, my friend Azure one of quilt folks brilliant photographers uh, she calls this you know when you spot this kind of thing happening on the street someone taking a woman's picture like this she says oh Instagrammers in the wild She's like, oh in Instagrammer in the wild in, in London, I swear, I don't go a day without seeing some, no, 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 I don't want to click on you, no. You just, you just see this, the influencer, right? Uh, I, sorry. I, it's culture, it's fine, whatever, but you should see them all the way they look, you know? I mean, this is a lovely picture. It's completely fabricated. And I know, I, I get it, it's cool. Look, she's in London. Okay, so you get the idea. So the quilt as an object is not far from cottage core, you know, like cottage quilts, soft, feminine, you know, a lot of the things that people, that's a cute, she's in London. Yeah, exactly. I know right where she is. Um, and so, and so this, so here we are, okay, cottage core. So, hey, new Elizabeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. It reminds you of some of the styles from the 70s. Oh, we're going to talk about it. Oh, yes, we are. We are going to talk about it. Um, by the way, I just have to say, in case, in case you are so inclined, I'm very, very, very bad at self-promotion. I'm really, I really am. If you have a friend and you're like, hey, I know they're not doing much, I'm going to text them and I'm going to be like, hey. I'm watching this thing. It's 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 really fun. You should go go come here. You know, come come over. Like hang hang out with us. That would be great. Again, it's about the conversation, right? So in twenty, uh, let's see. Well, we're gonna find out. So so Emily Bode, I pulled up my my different tabs here. Blah, sorry. Um, there's a woman named Emily Bode. Okay. And I heard about Emily Bode. I'm going to pull her little thing up right here. This is an article from GQ. And uh, 
this was one of the first big articles uh, about her in 2018. I was going to say 2018, okay? Mm-hmm. Emily Bode is got a ton of press. This is Emily. Um, because uh, when she was burst out, when she burst out onto the New York um, fashion scene, because she she's a very good designer. I mean, she's obviously very talented, and she uses quilts, actual old quilts, you know, vintage quilts, as the material for her clothes for much of her collection. Um, she sources these quilts. I can say something about how she and other people get those quilts, and I will. But she, um, she uses them as material, like so. Now this is a woven piece. Okay, so let's see if there's a... That's an ad. Okay. Okay, you can see a quilt up there on the wall. Okay. So here's, here's a quilt right there, being used in a jacket. And she really got a lot of attention. It, you know, her timing was good. For whatever reason, you know, she hit in 2018. So this cottagecore thing, I mean, it's not completely out of nowhere. Emily Bode was kind of, sort of, completely out of nowhere in 2018. She was not, definitely, as we'll see, like she was definitely not the first one to do this by a long shot, okay? But it seemed novel to people who hadn't seen this before and people really liked the clothes. Um, and so, so she won, actually. Look at that. She won, um, I almost want to make it smaller. I want you to see the whole thing there. Hang on. Yeah, hang on, let me just go to Okay. Um, yeah, she won the, the Vogue New Fashion Designer, like Emerging Fashion Designer Award that year, I think. And, and she started, she started just a huge trend. Um, and so it goes, and so it goes on. Oh, interesting, calf's hair. I don't know, I don't remember seeing that before, but obviously. So, so Emily Bode, okay. Um, this article, oh, sorry, actually, I gotta make this back to, I gotta reset the screen. All right. Okay, so that's that. Hang on, I gotta get... So 2018 to now. Okay, it's happening. It's happening. Now, there's another article I want to read to you that was from... Oh, sorry, sorry. That was from a little bit... Um, in You know, in between the Emily Bode thing and the, um, the stuff that we're going to look at now. And I want to find it. Let's see. Hang on one second. Um, quilt core. People say quilt core too. Um, quilt core drama. And the article that I'm going to pull up is extremely relevant, as you'll see, because it talks about ownership, right? Who owns these quilts that people are using? Who owns this? Um, who owns this this style? Who owns the quilts? Who who gets to cut up these quilts? And you know. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, there, there was a big dust up because Emily Bode, who was making her name, doing all this quilt stuff, um, there soon came this other guy. Here's this article. Okay. There came this other guy named... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Uh... Tristan Detweiler. Okay, so this is, when is this? This is 2021, February 2021. This is also in GQ. I like GQ. They do great fashion stuff um, and a lot of other good things. So so on the left, Emily Bode design. On the In the center and on the right is this Tristan Detweiler, his clothes that he's making. And so there's this quilt drama, right? Qu a quilt fashion drama, quilt core drama in the industry because people are like, wow, this Detweiler guy completely ripped off Emily Bode. Like, yeah, on the right, Emily Bode. On the left, you know, Stan. I think that's what the guy calls his collection, whatever. Um, and what was so fascinating, yeah, I mean, <laughs> on the left, 
this Tristan guy from 2021. On the right, Bode from 2019. So it's... But what's hilarious about this conversation between these two designers is that they are, okay, that was the end, um, is that they're talking about, you know, who, who owns this look, <laughs> this Luke, who owns, who owns this kind of look? Like, is there a way to copyright or is there a way to sort of protect the intellectual property of, of this look? And it's hysterical because they're using quilts that someone made long ago. I know, yeah, quilt clothes have been around forever. Exactly, Elizabeth. Um, but they're using other people's, you know, quilts to, it's like, who's appropriating what? Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, there's no ownership for, for making quilts out of, out of clothes because anyone can do whatever they want. But, like, did anyone think about the person who made the quilt and how you know, how much you can own what they did. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to articulate, but like, if we're talking about, you know, making something that looks like something else, like, well, you're taking someone's quilt and making it look like a jacket, essentially. So like, you know, so that so that's really interesting. And Elizabeth's point <clears throat> about how quilted clothes have been around forever anyway, that's where we're gonna go next. Okay. So, Oh yeah. Okay. Oof. We're going to watch this little video, by the way. It's a 10 minute video. Not yet. We're going to watch it in a little bit. Quilt coat tutorial. This gal, Emily, you know, 18,000 views on it from February. Um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to watch that, but, but not just yet. We're going to look at some, some, uh, um, some images from the past, right? Oh, I got this cool thing. Eric got me this cool thing. And I think, wait, wait, I gotta see if you can see it. I gotta look at my camera. Um, yeah, it's this little button, button thing. And I can press, so let's see if it works. Okay, I gotta go back up here. And let's see if I can pull up, I've got a button that'll pull up my, my finder. Oh! Eric, honey, I pro, I programmed it. And everything, I, I, I figured it out and and I'll show you this this little guy so so okay I'm really excited so I don't know yeah I think I don't know if you can see it or not ah, probably not well this little button here up on the right hand side that's got a little puppy icon I made the icon and everything and uh, it it says love on it and that button doesn't work yet but one day it will work and that's the button that shows you how many people you have in the room and I think that I've been like performing, you know, all my life, like making theater and like, you know, doing stuff for audiences. And, you know, I just, I want a full house one day, you know, but I feel like if I press the button to look at how many people are in the audience in the house that night, you know, it could be a good feeling. It could be a bad feeling. So I, I put a puppy on it, on the button to, to make sure that I have my, my priorities straight, right? Like whoever is here, and it says love on it. Anyway, okay. Um, we have to do these self-care things. Oh, I also have a button for... This is so cool. I have a button for the International... And I, okay, watch your screen. I think you're doing that. For the International Quilt Museum. Search page. Oh! So I can just be like talking to you and doing this and that. And then press a button on this thing. And we'll go there. Okay. So now I'm going to press the button that takes me to, takes me back to this folder. Oh, it worked. It worked. I'm so happy. Um, let's look at, wah, let's look at, well, okay. Actually, oh yeah, yeah, we have to look at Adolfo first. Sorry, sorry. I've got a lot of stuff to show you, but Adolfo patchwork dress, Gloria Vanderbilt. Do you remember, were you around when this, this was all happening? I mean... Gloria Vanderbilt is amazing. She was an amazing woman. I remember reading a biography uh, of her. Ugh, wow. And right around the time, in fact, right when I was kind of going through a lot of that stuff, and it really helped me. I mean, she, the, the, some of the struggles she had in her life, um, 
I don't know. I really, I felt it, man. I felt it. We were kind of going through some of the same stuff, you know, at the time I read her biography and it really helped me out. Um, and so I really have a soft spot in my heart for her. And she was a designer and, um, a, an author. I think she wrote a couple books, maybe the mother of Anderson Cooper, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, and she was patchwork crazy, at least for a while in terms of decor and in terms of fashion. And she wore this dress famously that was designed by Adolfo. Um, Adolfo, I forget his full name. We can look it up. Um, this is a famous photograph. She was with her, her husband here. Um, yeah, I didn't pull these into a, into a folder, which I should have done, but, um, yeah, I mean, wow. Adolfo used quilts to, you know, as material for clothing for her and for other people. In fact, if you do Adolfo, um, crazy quilt dress, I think it's at the Met. I think it's at the Met in the Costume Institute. Um, oh no, it's at the V&A. It's at the V&A here in London. I think I asked if it was on display. Oh, I know what I did. You can't go there now because they're renovating their whole like collection archive thing. Uh, the, I think it's called the costume room or something like that. But the V&A, usually you can book time and, and book, you can book time to see a piece from the V&A collection, like, you know, in, in the collections room, like they'll pull it for you and you can study it and, you know, not breathe on it basically and look at it. And I, I asked if I could see this, but they were, it was, they were closing down for the, um, for the renovation. I tried. I'll see it one day. But so, you know, so this was being done in the seventies. And in fact, um, Yves Saint Laurent, whoops, patchwork dress, mountain artisans. This should, yep. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> I've just looked at a lot of this stuff. Um, this is Yves Saint Laurent. He was, and I, oh, the mountain artisans I really want to talk about someday too. But um, this was even earlier. This is the 60s. Who said the 60s? Yeah, Carol. Yeah. Um, yeah, wow. I mean, so Yves Saint Laurent, right? And these women in, in West Virginia were making the quilts that he was using as material for for these dresses. So this was happening at that time. And, you know, to me, to me, part of the reason this is interesting, why quilts and fashion are an interesting intersection is because, you know, people think of quilts a lot of times, even though this kind of thing is right in front of them. Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Adolfo, soon we're going to see Ralph Lauren, Calvin Klein, um, Emily Bode, Isabel Morant, Dior, Christian Dior, Alexander McQueen. Quilts come up all the time in fashion. Um, but still, this persistent um, conception uh, that quilts are old-fashioned, made by poor people and or old people, as though that were either novel or un unfortunate, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll talk more about that in a second, but, but it's, it persists. And I know that most quilters in America, at least, and I would say it's fair to say here in the UK, that, you know, the, the average age of the quilter, you know, is 60 something. And there are reasons for that. Um, quilt making costs, it, it takes time. Not everybody has a lot of time, whether they are economically, you know, not able to take lots of time off for retreats and, you know, sew all day and, you know, have their own dedicated studio. You know, quilting can cost a lot of money. You can spend a lot of money on it. Let me put it that way. And that's not always something that people can do. So, so it is true that, um, you know, when people get a little bit older, maybe they have some retirement, maybe they have some savings. And so they're able to make quilts. And so that's one reason why, you know, the 60 year old, 60, 60 ish year old is, is part of the quilter. Oh, Amy, get ready. Like, yes, Alexander McQueen used quilts in fashion and here in for a treat. Oh my God. 
forget it. Recently, too. Not just recently. So, so, you know, when you get older, maybe you have a little bit more time. Maybe you have more room. Maybe the kids are out of the, you know, you got an empty nest now, so you can turn one of the bedrooms into a quilt studio where you couldn't before. So that's one reason the age is a factor. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, there's just this, this idea that it's only, you know, women in their 60s. And then there's this, like, weird energy or this weird, like, subtle diss that quilts aren't cool, even though they're obviously cool. Quilts aren't that cool because 60-year-old women are making them, which is extremely insulting. <laughs> and like, eh. Like, I don't use a lot of the, the isms or the ists, you know, the, well, the word, you know, like ableist or, or um, you know, sometimes I think these, these terms are applied like so liberally, they don't, they cease to make sense. They cease to, they like go against common sense, whatever. But, you know, uh, ageist, <laughs> it, ageist is real in terms of how people talk about who quilters are and, and who's making quilts. You know, it's like, oh, I think I said this on an early stream when I was just, don't watch those very first streams. They're so bad. Um, but, you know, these aren't your grandmother's quilts. It's this hackneyed phrase that gets used a lot. And it's like, what's implicit in that? is like, these aren't your grandmother's quilts. These are actually awesome. Unlike your grandmother's quilts that are completely just impossibly uncool and like, let's not talk about it, you know? So I think that's crap. Um, Cause grandmother raised you. She, hopefully she raised you right, but apparently, you know, she didn't. I mean, grandmothers keep, keep this country going. This one and the one I'm from. So, um, yeah. So still, you know, we get the we get the diss, you know, about quilts being uncool, even though they're cool. They're cool enough for fashion designers, right? So I'm gonna press my button and show you what I mean. Ooh, there's McQueen. <laughs> yeah, it's cool in my thank you, Carol. It's cool in all of our minds. It is cool. So we're gonna go to Ralph Lauren next because after Adolfo, oh, this is so great. After Adolfo, we we kind of speed forward. Um, hang on, now can I? Here's here's the big. Here's the question of the day. Hang on, I'm gonna take the chat away for just a second. I would really love to go full screen. On this, but I want you to see the chat. I mean, that's so important. It's obviously, incredibly important. No, no, I can't do it. I can't do it, you guys. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta exit full screen, but I'll make it as big as I can. I'm so annoyed by that. Okay, no, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Hang on, let me pull you back up here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we'll go with this. I think this is all right. Uh, 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 sorry, okay, making you dizzy. Well, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so, in, I think, 80, I have a lot of notes on this, but I actually didn't go that deeply into my notes. I mean, I think it was like 85, 86, a big year for for quilts in so many respects. I mean, excuse me. Wait, I'm not tired. I'm, I get this way when I'm excited. So we looked at, you know, stuff happening in 86 with the Boise Peace quilt. We looked at, you know, all kinds of stuff over the past streams that was just a hot time for quilts, you know, the mid 80s. And so Ralph Lauren used quilts in his clothes. And, and this was part of the, the rise of Ralph Lauren, you know, establishing himself as this Americana, you know, all American, you know, kind of like um, bougie, uh, super bougie, very white, you know, like New Englandy um, vibe, you know, it was like cable knit sweaters and horses and like boat shoes and khakis. You know, it was a very New England kind of Americana that he was going for. And, you know, and it, and he, he achieved that. He, he did quite well for himself. And this collection, um, and a couple others and more as we'll see later, but this collection was used quilts. Um, cut, they cut up, you know, vintage quilts to use. 
Um, this is an actual, now, oh, yeah, okay. I have to make it smaller because it's gonna take you away every time I do that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I described Ralph, Ralph Lauren, you know. See, now I need a little Prosecco, so. So, um, this is an actual sweater from that collection. It was on eBay. Um, if it had been my size and it had actually been available, it would have been very bad because I probably would have had to get it. Uh, if you were here on yesterday, oh my God, we did the really early live stream yesterday, didn't we? Oh, so long ago. I actually kind of liked being up that early, but not a lot of people came, but I didn't advertise it. Anyway, yesterday we talked about my mom's vest book, mom and Liz and their vest book. I mean, I'm just saying, that mean librarian who didn't like Mom and Liz's little vest book. Well, <laughs> did you know Ralph Lauren was using vests and sweaters <laughs> together? So I think I've got another piece from the actual... Yeah, that was on eBay as well um, at one point. And unfortunately, you know, I just... Ruffles? No. I, I don't do ruffles. They look fabulous on some people. Uh, they don't look fabulous on me. They look ridiculous on me, uh, which is part of the reason the cottagecore thing, eh, can't do it. Which is funny, because, like, I'm into quilts, man, but, like, a peasant dress, like, puffed sleeves. And and also, the cottagecore thing is more for the maidens, perhaps. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a 42-year-old 42 42 -year woman. I'm a woman of a certain age. I'm not going to wear... My hair and braids, actually, I totally would. But that's about as far as I'd go for cottagecore. So, so this, but so I was not interested in the skirt, even if it was available. But this is a piece from it, and that's a really old quilt top, it's from what I can see. You know, those are old fabrics. They are 19th century fabrics that were made into a quilt top and sourced by Ralph Lauren. And I'll tell you what I know about where they get these quilts and how they get them. Because I had a really interesting conversation with a dealer recently on this very topic. Um, is this, oh no, that's new. Okay, hang on, hang on. Oh, here's, here's Ralph. Oh, God, really? Like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, ugh. He's, it's just a little much, isn't it? Isn't it a bit much, Ralph? <laughs> What are you doing? What is this? Why did I, <laughs> I'm sure I, I picked this picture because it would elicit that reaction. I mean, I, pull, I, I, I throw things into folders, you know, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna talk about quilts and fashion. So I, you know, grabbed my Ralph Lauren folder out of my Google Drive, you know, downloaded it, put it into this program, but I forgot I had this picture, this particular picture, barf. <sighs> um, great, thanks, I, I, I'm done with that. So this, by the way, is another picture from the ad campaign for that collection. And I would say, I mean, look, everything old is new again. Everything comes around, especially in fashion. There's like an actual cottage on her sweater. I think it's a school. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. She's wearing a, a doily like <laughs> lace necklace, I mean, a lace collar, a puffed sleeve sweater with like, the alphabet on it. I mean, I mean, she looks fabulous. I love it. So Ralph Lauren really, he really caught hell for this. Okay. I'll show you. Hey, Nori or Nor 87. I don't know about the screen names. What I think is maybe the early y'all early folks who are here. I'm going to remember you. I'm going to write Carol, Rhonda, Michelle, like I've got this, you know, Lee, um, and maybe, you know, Nori, if you tell me how to say your name or, oh yeah, Rhonda, yeah. Um, so, so I'm so glad you're here, uh, Nori87, and, and I hope I got your name right. And as more people come, I won't be able to remember who's who with the screen name, so I'm just gonna say your screen name and I might get it wrong. But, I forget one of my points. I, I don't wanna mess up your name, but I might, okay. But, but not if you come by all the time, because then I'll remember it. Um, Nori is cool, okay, cool. So the sweater with the ruffle, no, the sweater with the ruffle, hang on. Ooh, I can press this lock. I can press this button. Oh, no, I can't. Okay, oh yeah, I can. 
Um, the sweater with the little cottage on it here, this one, Rhonda, is from the 80s. That's from the same ad campaign as this. You see how they're so wistful looking, at, sitting on the hay, sitting in the barn, you know? Um, I love that. I mean, Elizabeth, I'm loving this whole look. I really am. I mean, look, she has like a flannel. Hey, Dimitri. Oh, you're a spammer. I hate that. Um, so she's got this like flannel thing. Anyway, so. Okay, so, so Ralph Lauren caught hell for this. Ralph Lauren quilt controversy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on. Um, I have a lot of um, clips. Is Ralph Lauren rich? Gee. Oh, yeah, $6.3 billion. Oh. Yeah, whatever. Oh, wait, no. Ralph Lauren, it didn't take the whole thing. Quilt clothes controversy. Google's so weird. 6.3 billion, ladies. 6.3 billion. Okay. Um, 2012 controversy interest. Oh, that was something else. The Cutter Quilt Fad. That's a really good paper. Um, I've read that. That's a, a scholarly paper. Um, Ralph Lauren apologizes to black fraternity. Great. He probably needed to. That's about something else. I'm going to say 1980s. I just want to show you, like, I know what I could do. I know where. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Newspapers.com. You know, when you join me, <laughs> when you join me on these live streams, you get to access some cool stuff that I that I have because I have a um, a, a, a subscription to Newspapers.com, which is not cheap. And you can look at this. I've already Googled it. I mean, I've already searched on Newspapers.com because I've researched this thing before. So you see, you can you can enjoy the fruits of my subscription and my labor. Um, oh, but I need to sign up. Fine, fine, okay, fine. Yep, okay, great. Okay, thanks. I haven't used it in a little while, so that's probably why. We're gonna see some newspaper, you know, clippings, just, just one or two, um, to show you what I mean. He was all over the news, I mean, in the newspapers, because he was really taken to task. His his fashion house was, was taken to task by quilters, okay, it's 1982, who were like, excuse me, excuse me, you are, you're, you're, you're cutting quilts into pieces. Like, why, why are you doing this for your, for your stupid fashion line? So already, you know, I don't think Adolfo got much you know, he didn't deal with much bad press when he was doing stuff for Gloria Vanderbilt, but Ralph Lauren did. Women were quilters, I should say quilters were really mad. And, you know, this was in the Fort Worth Star Telegram in 1983, this article about how people were mad. Um, and let's see another one. Uh, da -da -da -da. I mean, just look at all these hits, right? Just look at all these hits. This might have been, it might have been syndicated on AP, so um, this might be the same article. But look, I mean, you know, Albuquerque Journal. Oh, this is different. Take that, Ralph. Quilter gets revenge on famous designers. So, so there was a whole big kerfuffle. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pull up my little thing here. Oh. So there. So that's Ralph. Okay. Then, so now we speed up. Let's speed up. Let's talk. Let's look at McQueen. No, that's not what. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're not done with Ralph. So this is new. This is contemporary. This is Ralph Lauren clothing that is available now or within the last year, okay? The quilts are back. Now, these are not actual quilts or patchwork. This has been, you know, this is fabricated stuff, if you will. But this cottage core thing and this quilt core thing and Ralph Lauren's history of making, you know, quilt quilt clothes is totally still a thing. Oh, barf. Um, and it's it's fine. I mean, you know, I don't think that's particularly attractive. That's cute. That's lovely. Remember how Mom and Liz did a basket a, a quilt vest book? Yeah. 
<laughs> ahead of their time. Oh yeah, that looks great. That's awesome. But think about Emily Bode and how how influential that particular moment. I love those sandals. Were for um, <laughs> I know I know Nori Revenge on Ralph. Um, you know how influential this this is. I just don't I don't know. I don't think the front looks very good. But there's our there's our lace doily girl. Here is a Ralph Lauren polo jacket. You know it's quilted. You know mass produced quilted but and, and this is not actually patchworked this is a fabric that is like a cheater cloth essentially that they're using here um you know it's cute whatever you know if I was a if I was a teenage girl who was on Instagram constantly and into the cottagecore thing you know I might be okay with that okay all right we've seen you we've seen you oh yeah there's another one I knew I had another picture from the Ralph Lauren ad campaign from, the, from 82 or 83. That's that's the year that it was in. I mean, can I just say, this is going to be a long stream, y'all. I'm just warning you. Um, if I wanted, that woman, that model is probably a size four. But when you put on a petticoat and a quilt and a peasant blouse and what, a horse blanket and belt it, <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? Like if I, I just, I just, uh, the silhouette was different in the 80s. It was all about that sort of, you could be sort of more Zoftig in the 80s. The, the supermodel thing, you know, it was before the Kate Moss waif look. I mean, really? She looks great, you know, she's sexy, but it's like, really you're belting a horse blanket on me. Thank you. What is she collecting? in that basket. What is she doing? Anyway, it's the back of the jacket. Okay, and I think that's it. That was notes. Okay, so that's Ralph Lauren. Now, so he's still doing it, you know? It's still, it's still there. Now, who was it asking about it? Um, hang on, who asked about, was it Elizabeth? You asked about Steve, uh, Steve McQueen. Um, McQueen, right? Remind me who, who asked about it. I think it was Elizabeth. Amy. I don't know. Okay, tell me who it, tell me who, who who asked about Alexander McQueen in, in particular. Alexander McQueen. Patchwork fashion. I have to show you some of the earlier stuff. Um okay, nope, don't look at that yet. No. No. Well, okay, it's too late. Okay, it's too late. And why would we wait? So this is from, so this is Vogue. Okay, this is Vogue. Amy, it was you. Okay. So this is from an article in Vogue. And I think I mentioned this, it might've been like the first or second like test stream that I did that this came up. I think it was because it was at that time I was like, I can't talk about quilts and fashion, like just going down the rabbit hole. Like it has to be a focused stream. It has to be like a thing because there's so much to say. Um, but I mentioned this, and I'm gonna blow your mind, Amy. I'm going to blow your mind. So this is March 2020. That was a great month, remember that? So look at this, I, uh, look at this, look at this. This is McQueen, okay. This is not the first time that the house of Alexander McQueen has used quilts as inspiration. I'm dead. I'm dead. I cannot. I cannot with this. Ugh. Like, if you think quilts are, like, not cool, like, what's wrong with you? Like, are you not looking around? Do you not just, like, see the world? <sighs> Whatever. Um, it's fair. It's fair that, like, we care, so we're looking, and people who don't care maybe aren't looking. Um, stop doing that. I'm sure they're going to show the quilts that inspired this. You might know already that this quilt and others, these soldiers in Tarsia quilts inspired the clothes. I mean, I could cry. Like I often, often, I feel like crying when I'm doing this stream because when I'm looking at this stuff, because it's so amazing. It's so amazing. So if you don't know about this, this kind of quilt, there's a wonderful book called War and Peace. Do you know what I'm going to do? The, the, the chat is going to go away for a second because 
I want us to see this quilt. Like, like see it, see it. Is that gonna do it? Yeah, okay. I want us to see it, see it. So, so, so here's what we're gonna do. I mean, this is why you're here, right? So we, we'll find out, you know, who made this quilt, you know, specifically. But this is a, a wool quilt. Um, 19th century for sure. Um, made by a soldier. And maybe we know his name and maybe we don't. We'll know uh, soon when I go back to the internet. These, these, there's a kind of quilt that looks like this. And they're uh, these quilts that were made by soldiers uh in you know in this particular time in history 19th century um they're made from uniform uniforms it, they're wool and and the kind of technique that they used is in tars intarsia or intarsa I'm not actually quite sure how to say it um if you know please let me know if it's intarsia or intarsia but these soldier quilts i mean look at this and, and you make it it's sort of the technique is sort of like you kind of whip stitch the pieces because you can't have much of a seam on these things. I mean, it's obviously like you'd never get through the, the material if you had to have a seam allowance, right? So there's, there's a specific way to do it. And actually it'd be really fun on one of these streams to, um, oh, my phone's ringing, In interesting. Um, it'd be really fun on one of these streams to look at that technique, to look at intars intarsia and, um, I know, right, Amy? Amazing. So, so, th so these quilts are famous. And by the way, the International Quilt Museum, Intarsia, Intarsia. Thank you, thank you, Elizabeth. Good. In, Intar, Intarsia. So it's not, it's not the Intarsia. It's not like Sia, the singer. It's Intarsa or Intarsia. Thank you. Um, the International Quilt Museum. Oh, I have, a, I have a button. Ho ho ho. Look at that. Look at that button. The International Quilt Museum, one of the people on the board, at least I think so still, is Annette Jarrow. And Annette Jarrow has the leading, hang on, the, she is the leading collector of these quilts. She has, this was at the Folk Art Museum, wow, 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 wow. Um, she had a, she had a famous, you know, I mean, a hugely popular exhibition called War and Peace. And it was at, let's just look at some of these. Um, it was at the Quilt Museum and it was at the Folk Art Museum. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. We, we're talking about fashion, but this is, this is what happens, isn't it? Well, will you let me look at them bigger? You won't? Really? Well, fine. Fine. I, only because you stopped me. American Folk Art Museum, only because you stopped me, it, will I not look more at those quilts? Okay. Yeah, we should go back. Alexander McQueen. <clears throat> so, I, yeah, they're looking at it. Looks like it's in Wales. That's interesting. If it's in Wales, I can go there and see it. Holy crap. So here they've got a print made, you know, paper, they're, they're draping, working on the draping working on the silhouette Alexander McQueen I mean are you dead like I <laughs> it's so great it's so cool I know Nori paper doll look <laughs> it's just ridiculous and this is a, I mean this is a great article oh you have to remind me if I forget this people gotta put it in the chat by the way you know what I need to do on these Twitch streams is after after we're done after the party's over I need to like put the links and like the description of what we talked about into the the video that stays on Twitch you know like I think that would be good I don't know it's a lot of work if any if I need an intern if you want to be an intern let me know so this is a great article I mean it really takes to oh animals are applique the patchwork animals are then applique on top so they're applicant, okay, okay. Look at that, that's so cool. It's <laughs> awesome. Quilts and fashion, quilts and fashion. 
surplus fabrics are used, interesting, constructed from in-house stock of British worsted wool and military flannel from past seasons, so they're upcycling. Interesting. Ugh, ugh, look at those hot shoes. Mm-hmm, love it. Okay, so Alexander McQueen, and fashion. Just want to show you a couple more of his earlier stuff. Let's see. Hmm. Well, I have. Hmm. It wasn't the first time he did it, but I don't know why. Hmm. I would open up my. Oh wait, I can. Hang on one second. Hang on. This is what we're here to do, right? I have to keep, you know, reminding myself it's, it's a show, but it's also just like, you know, it's just we're just hanging out. So if I need to look something up. Don't, don't think of it as like, oh no, it's all going off the rails. It's not. Okay, hang on. All right. um, there's that. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't know. There's a there's a, um, a hexagon jacket. I, anyway, if I find it, if I find it, I'll put it up there. But he did some more stuff that was patchwork related um, earlier on, and it was it was great. You know, it was great. It was like um, hexagons. There was some printed fabric, printed material. He had that was that was in a hexy a hexy kind of kind of situation and it was great um so that's alexander mcqueen now press my button oh check this out okay that's mcqueen we're gonna look at a few more isabel morant this is interesting she's really i mean here we go gotta pull this up here Isabel Morant is a French designer, very popular. I, I mean, I love her stuff. It's it's she's been doing the cottage core thing for a while. I think um, that's safe to say. Oh, here we go. Um, and so her stuff is you know it's very French and it's very it's very feminine, but it's cool. I really like I really like Isabel Morant. I think her her things are pretty cool. She does have a lot of ruffles. There's there's a good amount of ruffles on Isabel Morant, but that's okay. It's okay. We, we, we forgive you. Um, I just want to look at some of the stuff that she's done with quilts. That's what we're doing. You know, and if you've ever, if you've ever bought a piece of quilted clothing, let me know. Hmm. These pictures, so these are patchwork inspired, which is another whole thing. She's not using old quilts. Oh, I try. I tried that coat on. I tried on. Mm. At Neiman Marcus in Chicago when it was out. You know how I said that, like, if I if I put on <clears throat> a horse blanket and a petticoat and belted it that it would look pretty bad i don't know i think it might look better than this coat looked on me um it was it was a disaster let me show you so, mm, 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 mm. isabelle marant quilt hold on quilt coat i'm sure it'll come up will it come up I love it too. I absolutely loved it. Oh, there's so much. Um, I absolutely love it. Oh, it was velvet. It was velvet. That was part of the reason it was such a problem. Yeah, it was this. Um, it was so beautiful. I saw it in Neiman Marcus and I was like, I must, obviously I have to have it. Like, obviously I need to buy this coat. Forgetting, I mean, forget the fact it was extraordinarily expensive. I forget how much it was. I mean, you're not going to go into Neiman Marcus and buy a, a quilt, I mean, a coat made by 
Isabel Morant and get out of there, you know, I mean, what I don't remember, what, $2,000, $2,500? What was interesting about it is that it wasn't, it's not, it wasn't pieced. God, how did they do it? I mean, it was velvet, it was printed. It was printed. And it was this velvety material. I mean, I don't know if it was velvet. The point is, it looked so bad. It looked really bad. The way that it like belled out. Again, I mean, it put it put twenty pounds on me, without even without even trying. Um, whoops, yeah. Ooh, there I did. I did the button. So it looked it, it would have looked amazing if I was sitting like her, um, but unfortunately we can't sit like her all day. All right. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's actually. I think that's Calvin Klein. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm getting into Calvin Klein. I think I, yeah, I combined some Calvin Klein in the, in this folder. That's okay. This is Calvin Klein. He loves using quilt stuff in fashion. He's done it many times. Yeah, I know. I mean, it was tragic. I wanted it to work. I, wow, look at this. This is, this is Isabelle Morant for sure. And um, this is years ago. So Cottagecore with Isabel Morant never left. Oh yeah, I love that. That's really cool. That's really cool. Look at that print. You know, it's interesting because she obviously, we're gonna do one of those, let go of the chat for a second to look at this really, really, really nice. Um, wait a minute, no, I did that wrong, hang on. Um, oh, I've got two pictures of it. That's cool. Hang on. Um, mm -hmm. We've got two. Yeah, this is great. Okay, we're gonna do this. Um, because I want to look at this as as a quilter. Well, as a quilter. Preview full screen. Enter full screen. Yeah. I mean, that's a grandmother's flower garden, right? Or it's a wedding ring. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a it's a wedding ring. Quilt. And, but those black, that black thing going on, I love. Obviously, Ms. Morant loved it as well. It's really cool. Like, and I don't think, I mean, I think that was, that's a quilt. I mean, that, that was a quilt that they, here, this is a, a, a closer version of it. I mean, a, um, a tighter shot. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm really trying. And with my button. Okay, here. This is what we need. Full full screen. Yeah, I mean, they didn't like they didn't like take a quilt like a normal wedding ring quilt, double or single whatever it was. They didn't take that and then like manipulate the colors of the patchwork, did they? I mean, I think this my point is I think this is the original quilt that they have, you know, manufactured as as fabric for this garment, which means the quilter did this, you know, herself. She did the black bits that they were part of her design. Obviously, right? Obviously. And that is the coolest. I love it. Now, how did she do it though? I'm just trying to, I love picking apart like how, I actually think the other picture is gonna, is gonna get us there. Um, yeah, no, let's look at this one. Hmm. I mean, she, it's, it's, she's just done, she's done the rings normal, right? But she's just creating a secondary design by using black, solid black in this triangle and this triangle. What's freaking me out is is this, th these triangles, because, I mean, isn't a wedding ring just a curved seam all the way around? Like, why are these black triangles there? You know what I'm saying? Like, does anybody have an idea? I'm serious, because this is amazing. That is so cool. I just, I just, I don't even know. 
it's it's cool enough to be high fashion and it's a quilt but i just don't understand the black looks like half a star it does it does but here's the thing oh no it really does i see what you're talking about basically like ooh, ooh, you know what i can do um here's what i can do ha huh. watch this watch this action half square triangles with background fabric yep yep okay half square triangles with background fabric i mean i think you're right but here's the here's what i want to know here's what i want to know Half star. I see it. I see it. Obviously. Half star. Okay. I mean, I see what you mean. But doesn't it look... Oh, maybe they squished it. Maybe maybe the, the design house squished it. Like, they elongated it, right? Because it does look too long. It looks a little bit... A little bit long. Annotate oval. Never mind. It looks like it's been elongated. Okay, okay. I'm not going to make you go back and forth with my windows. It is really cool. It's amazing. It looks so good. So I'm just saying, like, you know, maybe your next quilt is is this, essentially, because this is great. Okay. Now that I've geeked out about that, let's, let's continue. Um, yeah, this is Calvin Klein. That's that's a like a polar fleece kind of thing. Isabel Morant bag. This is this last season. I mean, this is within the past year. Oh, this is great. This is great. This is this is Morant, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's uh, to me this is it's just like, yeah. It's wonderful, isn't it? Mm. Mhm. Mm I think it was stretched out too. Yeah, this is really pretty. This is Morant. Okay. A quilted coat, you know, not quilts being used as material um Marant love this I don't know like I wonder I, I talked to my friend Jenny Smith here in the UK about this um is it too much for quilt people to wear things like this <laughs> like is it like okay we get it you're into quilts I mean like I've never wanted to wear like quilt block earrings or something maybe maybe I should I don't know is it a little much a little bit on the nose to wear like a patchwork thing i have i have one jacket that's pretty clearly half square triangles but a little bit mo a little modern quilt kind of thing isabel morant i mean wow just the colors are so good i think that's what what she does really well is she does these muted kind of colors so well yeah Morant, knitwear, you know. Look at that little puff sleeve, a little, a little gather, a little gather. Hmm. It's not too much. Okay, good, good. I don't want it to be too much, but I didn't know. All right, we've seen you before. Oh, look at that. That is, yeah, that's Isabel Morant. I mean, okay, it would not be. I would not find it too much to have that bag. Oh, I want that bag. I really do. Oh, I would love to carry that bag. <sighs> I have to see how much it is. Okay, there's a skirt. I have to see how much it is. We're gonna. I'm gonna look after we're done. It's it's gonna. I and mean, it's not available anymore because it's it's too late, right? But I mean, I know, I know. Oh, yeah, you're right. It, well, here. So Amy, here's your chance. <laughs> Because this is a Belmont handbag. Oh, and I love the size. Oh. I don't know if there's not a shoulder strap, though. So here's this in a skirt. Pretty short. Pretty, pretty, pretty. These. I almost bought these jeans. I think I wanted to. I kind of like them. Hmm. Another quilt. I have I have so many images. I hope I hope you like this. I, I like it. I like going through Isabel Morant. That's Calvin Klein. I'm I've looked at these images a lot, as you can tell. That's Calvin Klein. That's cool. I think that's pretty pretty basically cool. I could wear that. 
I know, I love that bag. Okay, we're gonna look, I'm really seriously. This is another one, this is, is this? I don't know if this is, yeah, it is Moran. It's funny, I should look at my file names because I've actually filed, named them, right? Mm. Love it, crossbody bag. We're gonna look at that too. No, there's the horrible coat. The color's terrible in that photograph, but it looked like a big gathered velvet potato bag. <laughs> I don't even know what a potato bag is, but it looked like that. You can kind of tell on the bottom how bad it was. Okay, all right. My pain, my pain. Oh, I wanted it to work. Yeah, here is where you can see that it was printed. You know, it wasn't pieced, it was this, it was amazing. I mean, the material, like, are you kidding me? Like this printed thing. Okay, da da da, ba, da, da. Cute, but not as cute as the black leather. Marant, okay, cute, man. Still partial to the black leather, here we go. See, I have to pull, uh, I have to pull all these images for my lectures and stuff and, and for my research. And that's the last image, which is convenient. Wardy patch bag. So that's that's what we're looking at here. Oh, man. Hang on. <laughs> okay, now let's just we'll make the pain. We'll make the pain start. Uh, okay, hang on. Probably have to check eBay. I don't know. Listen, listen, you, listen, you, if we find this thing and it's, you know, cheap, it's not going to be cheap on eBay or something, you just simmer down. I will end this stream. Oh, look at that. How dumb that is. Um, I will end this. I will end this stream and I will go. I will scoop it. Don't you dare. Oh, where is it? Hang on. Hang on. Marty patch bag black patchwork Isabel you have to get creative with your with your googling I mean here's the bag 695 pounds not bad <laughs> but that's not the one are you kidding hmm interesting this isn't the one I only have eyes for no filth <laughs> what if someone comes to the stream just right now and they're like yeah, I went to Mary Fonz's Twitch stream. She was shopping. I'm not shopping. I wish I was shopping. Ugh, it's not there. It's not there. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, I just pressed my button. Um, let's look at a few more, and then we'll, you know, we'll do this again. I think I was afraid. I was like, oh, I don't know if I should talk about quilts and fashion just yet, you know, because I wanna want to make it's such a juicy topic I want to make sure you know people are coming by and and you know there's you know this enough people know about it right to to enjoy it but there's so much to say about it I can't possibly get it all done so now let's let's just let's get back to uh to what's going on currently um yeah there's so much more to show you there's so much more to show you but we're gonna go to this Instagram thing I've got loaded up so we've seen all of the, you know, influence of the, we've seen cottage core is big. We've seen these quilt clothes, you know, clothes made out of quilts, right? Um, and, and, and so then, so then something happened and I think, and it, it did happen during the pandemic. Cutting up quilts to make clothes it was Emily Bode. It was Ralph Lauren before Emily, it was Calvin Klein, you know, quilts quilts in fashion were were sort of back you know starting in 2018 they had their moment again just they had it again they didn't have it for the first time as we know now they had it again and then you know fast forward a year year and a half and so forth people are home this is how the cottage core thing how people are trying to interpret why you know girls are wanting to wear Laura Ashley and not all girls but a lot of them and so everywhere you went, it seemed, uh, on Instagram, hang on, let me find the 
it, no, no, I'm giving it all away. Yeah. It seemed like, I don't know if it was true for you, but there started to be a whole lot of gals um, selling on Instagram, and probably Facebook too, jackets and, and mostly jackets because... I mean, a quilted shirt, like, eh, I don't think so. Um, but if you're going to wear a horse blanket, <laughs> why not wear an actual quilt as a shirt? Emily Bode does make those clothes. Um, pants and things, but quilted jackets. Sorry, jackets made from quilts. Because a lot of jackets are quilted, but jackets made from quilts really got popular uh, on Instagram. Um, I'm going to, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you this. This is, I'm going to go back to Instagram in just a second. This is an article in the New York Times from, let's check the date. I hate that picture. I can't even talk about it. 2020. Okay, 2020. What could be more comforting than a quilt coat? Old patchwork blankets are getting new life as uh, getting new life as garments, but some preservationists cringe at ripping up heirlooms for fickle fashion. Now, I'm going to use the ladies' room really quick, and I'll be right back, and we will talk about this because I I need your help. I need your help. I want some opinions, and I want to bounce a few things off of you that for me were new when I looked at this again. This topic. I found an article that blew my mind and I have to share it with you. How's that for a, a cliffhanger before we go to to um, the station break, right? So I'm gonna put up the little be right back screen and I'll be right back. You're doing great. I hope that you're enjoying yourself. Okay, two minutes, I'll be right back. Uh, I need to have a button for the mic to turn off the mic. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be terrible if, you know, I don't know. I don't know if, if, I, if there was a hot mic and, you know, we all fear like having a hot mic, you know, and not wanting there to be one and, and then just being, you know, caught in an embarrassing moment. Okay. Um, you know what I mean? So, um, so so yeah so 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 these people carol you're making me laugh here they do not look too happy about wearing those clothes <laughs> correct um man i wish i had some chips um 
cheese will have to do. Look at his pants. I mean, Psychic Outlaw. That's the one I wanted to pull up on Instagram. We'll do it. Um, look, look, look at their faces. They're like, oh, I mean, they have jewels under their eyes. I don't know. I love fashion. I said it in the beginning, but it's ridiculous. It's absurd. But, but this close up is good. That, I don't know. I don't know if that, if her, if her jacket or her shirt, oh no, it's a dress, sorry. I don't know if her dress is made from an actual quilt. It does look like it is, right? A quilt that's a bit later in provenance than this, than this guy's little, little number. Um, this is older, obviously, than this. Um, yeah, I think that is, I think that is. Um, they're all vintage. So, so this article uh, from the New York Times in 2020 talks about the controversy. Okay, now, I know that picture. The, the, this one, now, I, 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 having been on the internet for a while, in a way that's not just like, I'm like secretly like, you know, lurking on what, I mean, I'm, I'm on the internet. I'm live streaming on the internet now, but like, you know, quilty and like my blog and like, whatever. Like I have, I have dealt with hate on the internet and it's terrible. Okay. I do not like it. I do not want to do it, but it is, it is okay for me to have opinions. And I think this is awful. I do. I just think it's just terrible. And this is not this, this, you know, talking about this stuff, it, it's not about whether it's attractive or not, really, the, the conversation that we're having here, the, the moment that we're spending together here is, is, is really not about whether it looks good or not. In fact, I've never even, that's never even come into my mind that, you know, um, aesthetic judgment just doesn't matter. Hmm. So this girl, if I recall, you know, the, the, her story kind of opens the article and, and this is a quilt from, that belonged to her grandmother, I believe. Let, let's, let's check real quick. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, her mother died. Okay. And this gal, she found a tattered quilt. Okay. So, okay. She doesn't know. Okay. So, so okay. So this girl's mother passed away, which is very sad, okay? And she found a quilt as she was going through the things and she didn't know who it was made by or whatever. And she saw on Instagram that there was a gal who made clothes out of quilts. Cassandra contacted her, sent her the quilt and she got, she got this. Um, so, I'm not, it's, I do not want to be mean. I just don't like it. How about that? So this was a thing that started happening a lot. Um, people, people were saying, I can turn your quilt into a jacket. I can turn, uh, I can turn lots of quilts into clothing, actual quilts. And again, this had been done before the quilts that they're using. I'm going to put this in the chat cutter quilts. The term, the term for these, the, the quilts that are used, that, that Ralph Lauren used, that um, uh, Alexander McQueen, if he was using, I don't think he used actual quilts. Anyway, anytime somebody uses um, a quilt in another application, like a doll, like a teddy bear, like a jacket, they're using quilts that are called cutter quilts. Okay. And the cutter quilt is an actual, I mean, that's a term applied to a quilt that say somebody at a, at a quilt show who's selling quilts, like they might have a big basket of cutter quilts, quilts that are too tattered, too beat up, too um, sort of busted to be purchased as like a bedspread. You know, it's like, well, that quilt is like tattered and torn and it's, it's just gonna, it's falling apart. So it's either going into the garbage or it's a cutter quilt, which means you, it still has value because you can cut it up and use it for other stuff. 
and this has been going on a long time. So, so these cutter quilts are being used again, or they're being sourced again, or so the story goes. I have some thoughts about that. Okay, yeah, cottage core here. You see. Um, let's look this up. Hang on one second. Psychic outlaw. Instagram psychic. Oh, pff, outlaw. Sorry, I don't always spell right out of the gate. Um, so, okay. The problem is this. Oh, God. Oh, no. That one hurts. One, ah, God. That one hurts. I, I mean, I, I actually am a little bit speechless on this one. One day ago. Here's the problem. I was okay with all of this for a long time. Um, because Oh, I mean, I swear I could almost cry. I better have some Prosecco. So, I mean, remember what I said about economics? You know, how much is a quilt worth? I don't know. It's hard to say. If it's, I call them priceless, worthless objects. If it's a quilt in your family and it's special, it's priceless. If it's a quilt that you find in a cutter quilt basket at a quilt show, it's, it's almost worthless. You know, so it's really hard to put a value on these things. And for me, for a long time, I was like, look, if a quilt is busted up and it can't really, it, it isn't serving anybody in a particular, you know, if it's going to go on the damn garbage heap because somebody, somebody's mother died and they don't want to deal with her quilts, you know, and they're just going to throw them in the, in, you know, they're going to keep them in boxes and send them to the landfill, like a thousand percent, cut them up, right? Use them for something cool. But what happened with the pandemic and what happened with Instagram, with social media, that's the difference now. And I know I'm getting old, but I don't, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong about this. I'm not. The volume of clothing that is being made out of actual quilts is so much bigger than it's ever been that I think we're, we're entering a problem. We're entering into a problem here because our, our vintage quilts, this is a non-renewable resource. We do not have more vintage quilts. Now, we do have a, a renewable resource of quilts because people are making a lot of quilts all the time. And in 30 years, the quilts that we're making now, I guess they'll probably be cool enough to cut into quilts. I mean, into jackets. Okay, fair. But I think that the, the quilts from this particular period, um, yeah, from, you know, this is, I mean, this is probably this tulip quilt. I mean, it's, it's hard to say, you know, this red, I mean, a red and white quilt, you know, red, white, and green tulip. I mean, it's probably 19th century. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Oh, it's beautiful. It's, it's totally gorgeous, right? It's totally gorgeous. Um, it's, it's, it's lovely. It really, it really is. I mean, I really find it beautiful, but, um, you know, we've all seen, we've all seen quilts like this, the tulip quilt, the, the basket quilt, the red, white, and green quilt, sometimes with that little accent color. So there's just so many of these quilt coats now. And, and I think, and, and, and here's the other 197,000 followers. The problem that I see with all of this, and, and like I said, there's just more of it. Um, our revolving supply of used slash recycled slash vintage quilts is refreshed every morning at 8 a.m. Select a quilt and fill out the form to build your own custom quilt jacket. Whew. They are made to order for each client. Da 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 da. So, so here's the issue. 
And sometimes, I mean, I suppose, so comments on this post have been limited. Interesting, right? Were they dealing with people who are really angry about these, these items? Angry about them cutting quilts apart? Here, here's the thing. Now, this is where we have this gal, okay? We're gonna watch this video together. It was when I watched this video of, what is her name? What is her name? Emily. And I'm sure she's very nice and she's cute. She's quirky. She's lovely. I wish her luck. But it was when I was watching her, everybody says, everybody who cuts up these quilts, everybody who does it says the same thing. And what they say is, well, these quilts have really lived their life and, you know, they're just like, so beautiful, but they're, you know, at a thrift store and they just were looking for a home. Yeah, Nori, yeah. And, and they all say it, and we're gonna hear her say it, where it's like, it just couldn't, you know, it just had lived its life as a blanket. And I was like, yeah, and that's what I kind of felt for a long time. I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's good to use these beat up quilts for this stuff. But then I was thinking, and looking at all these pictures, you know, Ralph Lauren and everything. And I'm like, hang on. <laughs> these garments that they're making are beautiful and well-made and very expensive. None of these people are using really busted up quilts or even quilts that are damaged at all. They are using really, really like well-made and well-preserved and totally functional quilts. That's what they're cutting up. And they might have, and I mean, just come for me, people, and, and try to argue with me. Because, I mean, and I don't mean you, I mean, <laughs> I'm getting really upset, obviously, but I, you know, I mean the people who are doing this, and, and I, I don't get like angry often, but I, I don't like it when people are lying. And, and to see a person with a, a gorgeous coat, like, like that and for them to think that they, that they are they were rescuing they were upcycling a quilt that was gonna go into the garbage you know that's a false premise because to cut I don't know I don't make garments but to cut out a beautiful jacket right to cut out the pieces the pattern pieces for a tunic coat you have to have a big quilt right don't you I mean, if it's a size large, I mean, let's go back to her. And not to say, I mean, I, I just mean that this is a lar this is a roomy coat, right? It's a drapey thing. I mean, that's a lot of quilt that you need. Am I wrong? <laughs> and so, so it was watching this gal that I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. These quilts that they keep saying are dead, that dead stock or like past their prime. I mean, seriously, like I'm upset and they're, because they're not. They're just not. Now, I will give, when we were looking at this picture earlier, this quilt is actually, this quilt is actually kind of screwed up, right? Like that's, that's a problem. You know, that's a hole. That's a hole. And this is, this is, I can't zoom any further, but you see that in there, that's threadbare. So <laughs> that's okay. I hope you're not charging me three thousand dollars for it you know and like i hope you give me like i don't know some sort of webbing <laughs> to, to fix it i mean can you would a dry cleaner even take it they'd be like i don't know if i can do this because this whole thing's gonna unravel when we try to clean it anyway um yeah thank you elizabeth it takes a lot of fabric to make a coat so so that was when i really kind of like turned on a dime on this whole thing um yep they had to fussy cut exactly like remember when we were looking at the alexander mcqueen story and how i mean matching that matching those seams to be perfect is like wow okay so let's see what she has to say for herself because and like i said god bless her right and she's trying to do her thing and i get it but i, I want to watch her with you it's a 10 minute video because i want to understand the the customer, right? Let's take a look. Let's talk about quilted jackets. I literally could not be more obsessed with this 
quilted jacket trend that's going on right now. I think that they are so cute and absolutely beautiful. Look at some of these I found on Pinterest. Now, I'm just gonna give credit where credit is due. These are from Lady Lancaster. She does a gorgeous job refurbishing these beautiful Amish quilts from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. <sighs> and I could not be more obsessed. The only problem... Really? Really? What was it? <laughs> I mean... Sorry. I don't remember this. Lady Lancaster. Oh, she's in Lancaster. Quilt clothes. Really? I mean, if she's... Ah. Like, is she cutting up, like, old Amish, like, wool quilts? Because if she is, like, that sucks. I, I, I mean, I don't know, does it? Maybe it doesn't matter. The world is, is, is chaos. It's a disaster. Does it matter if she does it? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. But, I mean, like, I think about the, the abstract art in American quilts exhibit at the Whitney in the 1970s. You know, it's 50 years ago. This is the 50th anniversary of that show that took quilts to a whole nother level that really changed the game for so many people. It's the reason we're all here. And like those were Yeah, if she calls it a if she calls it a blanket, I'm losing it, Nori. Please never leave. Um oh the outlaw collection, really. But like yeah, Amish quilts in great condition. I mean Amish quilts were the fundamental like piece of the abstract art in American quilts exhibit. Beautiful Amish quilts. Beautiful Amish quilts. Oh, Sorry, I'm like, mm. those quilts were the quilts. Those jewel toned, square and a square, diamond and a square, those quilts were the quilts that, for better or worse, you know, convinced the hoity toity, annoying art world that, like, we matter. Like, quilters matter and quilts matter because they were so abstract, you know, the abstract art, you know, they looked like abstract art. Okay, they did. But, like, those Amish quilts are the quilts that, that, that changed the game. And when I think about La Lancaster, you know, okay. I mean, that, that, that it's, it sucks. It sucks. Like it, you know, hmm. okay, let's continue. The problem is that they're a little bit pricey. The girl just doesn't have that kind of change to throw out one of the most beautiful jackets ever. So what we're going to do is try to make our own. Ooh. I want chips. I went to this fabulous thrift slash antique store near where I live and found a whole pile of super cheap old quilts. Some of them were a bit too damaged, like this beautiful you see? yellow one. Too damaged. So sad. But I did find some others and ended up coming home with a whole box of quilts. Um, <clears throat> as in, I did find some others that were perfect. Right? I did find some others that were not damaged. <laughs> right? Quilts for about 15 bucks. You know that I live in a tiny house, so my goal is to make something out of each of these quilts, and then I'll most likely give some of these things away, but for now my goal is to create at least one fabulous quilt coat from my findings. Let me show you what I ended up taking home with me. I just kind of threw everything out there on my go. bed because, again, space is a thing here. But here is what I found that I'm going to try to make into something. First of all, this cool old afghan. This isn't a quilt, obviously, but I just thought it was so beautiful. I thought I... Honey, if you cut that up, it ain't going to work. Try to make a wrap out of it. And oh. then we've got this little baby quilt. I think it's so cute. Don't love the lining on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that this is so pretty. I love this quilting pattern and the colors on it. There's definitely not enough of this to make a whole jacket. So we're going to get creative and I'm not sure what we're going to do I know. with this yet. Maybe like a cute little top or something. I found this. This is a um, quilt top. So it's mm. actually not even quilted. See? Okay. Sorry. So if I open up the back, you can kind of see inside. Um, this is actually kind of perfect because I yeah, love the colors yeah. on it. I see inside. Ah, sorry. Um, this is actually kind of perfect. Look at the. Do you see this? This blew my blew me away. That 
is 1980s. That is not 19th century. That is that, it, that, look at that hunter green. Look at that dusty rose. Look at that big floral print. That is some Laura Ashley. Um, what, am, what else am I thinking of? What, what, who, you know, designers in the uh, Ma Englebright, you know, <laughs> Mary Englebright, whatever. That is vintage. And that is the 80s. And she thinks it's cool. So this is very interesting because, you know, the quilts that were made in the 80s that were like, yeah, it's hunter green and dusty rose. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. And both of those colors are in that quilt. That whole country chic or whatever, I don't know what it was, country, country home kind of decor. This is a young girl. Thank you, Nori. It is. This is a young girl who is super into that color scheme and super into that aesthetic. And let me tell you, I went into a vintage store here in London not long ago. Hand to God. I mean, this is what happened. I looked around and I was like, wow, the 80s are really in, I guess, right now. People, my good people, the 80s are not in. The 80s are vintage now. Yeah. When I was like a, a young whippersnapper, you know, looking into quilt, I mean, sorry, <laughs> looking into vintage shops for like cool stuff from the past, I was like, oh, pillbox hats, like cool, like gloves and so, you know, the 50s were vintage. No, no, no. No, no more. The 50s are like dinosaur age. The vintage stuff that the kids want is 80s. All right. Because I love the colors on it. Again, I love the style of this quilt, but I can do my own batting and my own lining, which is ideal. And then I also found this beautiful old toile that isn't going to be a quilt jacket, but it ugh, was too beautiful to pass up. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. This guy I picked up. And I know. I don't know. Honestly, I might be regretting it just a little bit. It's an unfinished quilt. The inside, I'm going to be honest with you, I really don't like it. But this side I thought was really gorgeous. And I thought that would be cute even though it's all just one fabric. It still has a cute little quilty Come on now. thing to it going on. And I thought it might be a cute little jacket. And then lastly here, I cannot... This one. This one, y'all. God damn it. Sorry. Believe I found this big old guy. It's big, but look how gorgeous that is. This is really the classic quilt thing that I was looking for. Here's the thing with this quilt, though. This is one side, and then look at the oh. lining. Oh. I kind of love ah. both sides of it. They're both so gorgeous. So... I don't know. So I'm thinking that I may want to try and separate the two sides out of this big quilt right here and make two like longer kimono type jackets out of them. If I can separate them and it's not too hard, obviously it looks like the, the way it's quilted is that it's not like sewn together, but it just has those little yarn tufts that holds the two sides together. You know what I'm talking about? So hopefully I can separate those two out and get two jackets out of it because I don't want just one side to be the lining. I love both sides of it so much. I think there's two totally different looks that could make something really cool. So ooh, ooh. here we go. Uh, next sorry. stop Sorry, is sorry. I'm reloading. Design. I'm reloading because things were weird. Okay, hang on. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but sorry. The, the resolution isn't great. Um, sorry, I apologize. Let's get her. Let's get her back right here and make two like longer kimono type jackets out of them if I mm. don't mess with me people I can separate them and that's not too hard right. obviously it looks like the, the way it's quilted is that it's not like sewn together <laughs> but it just has those little yarn tufts that holds the two sides together <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? She's not so right. So hopefully I can separate those two out and get two jackets out of it because I don't want just one side to be the lining. I love both sides of it so much. And I think there's two totally different looks that could make something really cool. So here we go. Uh, next stop is design, figuring out what I'm actually going to do, how this is going to turn out, what my pattern <laughs> pieces are going to look like, and so forth. So Ooh, burn. let's get to that. 
Carol like Brown designs with just a quick sketch. This gives me a chance to really think <laughs> through the pattern pieces that I'll Excellent. use for my project Excellent. and have a distinct vision of what I want to do. Now, this project ended up looking a little... See? That's a big-ass jacket. You better have a big quilt. A bit different. I went for a classic kimono style with no collar as I had originally planned, as you can see in this sketch. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. The first step was to clear the coffee table out of the lid. Also, I just have to say, like, I love her. The reason I love her is because life is hard, and it's a pandemic, and everything sucks. And she says, a big project in a tiny house. Like, I get it, you know? <laughs> Girl got me messed up, indeed. But, like, it's cool. Like, everything is terrible. I don't fault her for being, A, young, very young, B, I mean, not not knowing any better, damn it. But also, like, she, I just want to say that because, like, it's a crack up, you know? Like, everything is 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 really weird and, and she's young and she's creative and she's excited and, like, all of that is true. All of that is true. And it is also true that this makes me, like, well, it doesn't put me off my cheese because my cheese went down fine and I want some more. But anyway, but I wanted to say that. You know, she, I don't, she's fine, you know, what? Ultimately, but ugh. living room, aka my sewing room and everything else room. Then I can lay relate. out the big quilt and cut off all of the little tufts holding those two sides together. Ugh. It didn't take too long to cut off all of those little tufts, and then once I did so, I separated the two sides of the quilt, threw away the batting that was in the center because it was gross and old, and then washed the two sides of the quilt twice. It's a new day. Last night I finished cutting it out so I want to show you exactly what I did for cutting out because I'm ready to basically just sew the whole thing up together I think this is going to be a quick, pretty quick project at the end of the day okay so it basically takes up go. my entire living room floor here but you it's huge this is the moment when I was like oh oh they're not they're not being honest or they're these designers who use these quilts are being they're they're sort of um skirting skirting a little bit they're they're being creative with their marketing they're not busted up old past use quilts they're not they are not you can see i basically That's it. That's just all. cut that main quilt down a little bit cut a big hole in the center so that we have an obvious front and neck hole and then I'll also show you, this is pieced together. I had to kind of cut off a strip of quilt in order to make these big, wide kimono type sleeves on there. And I just tacked them to either side where the sleeves are gonna go. Um, I also did, I had enough fabric to make a lining as well. So, blah, that's my lining. <laughs> Same exact shape, same exact look to it. It's just going to be the other side. Now, because I used an old quilt and ended up taking that quilt apart I a think, little bit, I have to actually put new... I think also part of the problem here <clears throat> is that she's looking at herself, you know? And it's it's a mistake people make on YouTube when they're first starting out. Like, like I can see myself on my little OBS screen, like my Twitch stream, or my... Yeah. I can see myself there, and if I looked at myself like this and talked to myself this whole time, like, ew, I have to look at you. You have to look at the camera. But when you're new, and she's not, you know, she's got a lot of views on this this video, but 1.9 thousand subscribers. I mean, she's she's not really a YouTuber, right? She's she's an amateur, or whatever. She's she's just whatever. She's not. She hasn't done this a lot. And when you do it a little bit more, you know that you have to look at the camera. It's much easier to look at yourself because you're like talking to an actual person even though it's just you it's harder to look into the void look into the camera where you can see no one and you're just it's really weird but but you have to do it because you can't just like be mesmerized by your own face talking and she doesn't know that so i think that's part of why like it's hard sorry okay. batting in because the old batting was just 
really gross and needed to be replaced anyway. So I will say this, if you are using a nicer quality quilt than the one I'm using, then the next step is not necessary. You can just cut this quilt up in uh, the shape that I've got it here already without having to do the lining and everything, and then seam bind around the edges and put the whole thing together. So you can skip over the next little bit here, but I have to go back now and put batting in and kind of reshape the quilt like it used to look essentially uh, with that fresh new batting. Because this kimono style doesn't require any shoulder seams, all I did here is fold this whole thing in half with right sides together, pin down the underarm and the side seams, and stitch along the edges that I pinned. Here you see me doing this to the lining of my quilt coat. I repeated this process with the outside of the coat and with the inner batting as well. And ta-da! This is what the two sides looked like before I sewed them together. Good job! Next I mean, step was great. to pin the lining to the outside at the neckline with right sides together and then, of course, sew it all down. One of the biggest tips I think I can offer hey. for a project like Baby this luck. is to use a quilting foot on your machine. This is actually the first time I've ever used mine and it was so helpful. I honestly might just use it for everything now. That's great. That's okay, cool. I've got the lining sewed in here along the neckline and the sleeves. So all I have left to do is some top stitching around the sleeve hem and the neckline here. I gotta top stitch this so it kind of stays together. And then I still have a raw edge, so I gotta figure out what to do with that. But then I'm basically done. Oh, I also decided to put some cute little pockets on here, so. I oh, I haven't noticed that. Um, that's a little, I mean, that's Sashiko <clears throat> stitching, right? Or just big stitching on something that she made, right? Yeah, so she, okay. I just took some lining, leftover lining I had, and kind of made this little hmm. pocket bag out of it. And my plan is to put some binding around the top of that pocket, and then Maybe just not. honestly tack it on. So we have a little pocket there. I'm so close to being done. I'm honestly amazed at how fast this project has gone. I've probably been working on it for three hours so far, <laughs> like all together. And this makes me really hopeful that I can maybe knock out another one this weekend. Oh, we'll see. Okay, I spoke too soon. I ended up doing the top stitching by hand, which took forever. And then the seam binding around the bottom also took forever. Oh, well. But here's the finished product. All right, girl. Okay, she's so happy. All right. got her binding on there all right I'm, I'm trying to be you know it's cool she's sewing right she's making her own clothes that's great agreed agreed rs quilty anyway that's it you know this is the customer okay yeah another one right like you cut up another one this is the customer this is who's into this it's the kids right these days <laughs> which one you like best I mean it I do think it looks I don't love the the shape of the jackets but I mean it, it looks pretty chic with these black pants right I mean she's young she's cute she can sort of get away with anything right mostly I mean I see girls wearing like literal like just like half shirts and whatever and they're not like you know not model sort of and they, they they're young they look great they can kind of wear whatever but it does you know it's interesting that an antique quilt right looks looks cool looks good with black boots and black pants this is why fashion designers keep using quilts this one's a bit shorter but just as cozy let me know in the comments which one you like best hmm. 
I think we've seen enough. Um, and I think probably the comments, I mean, 800 likes, 13 dislikes. It's a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, never ever read the comments ever on anything ever. So we're not going to. So, okay. So we've been on a couple hours. I love you all so much for being here. There's more to say. And so like, you know, let's say it, let's do it sometime. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I really, I really think that the, the difference, the difference between <laughs> cottagecore, what? I think the difference between, is that Jackie O? Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She was amazing. I understand. But like the cult of Jackie Onassis to me, it's a little, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. Her and, and, and uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Audrey Hepburn. It's just, I don't know, it's weird. It's like, okay, they're very thin, very rich white ladies. Okay, yeah, okay. Can we like look at other people? I'm sorry, I know a lot of people love those women and they were very cool, but a lot of women are really cool. And I just, I just, I don't know, this obsession with Jackie Onassis is like, can't you give anybody else some airtime, you know? Anyway, sorry. Um. That's not her too, anyway. Um, okay, so so that's what I have to say tonight, y'all. And I am so glad you came. And I don't care if anybody else comes. We have a little crew here. We have a crew here, don't we? And um, I mean it. I really, really value you. Thank you. Because I love doing this. I think it's really fun. And you're making it possible. Because if no one was here, and, and I mean, I just wouldn't do it. I just, I just couldn't. Because it's supposed to be about, like, connection you know so thank you for coming I hope you have some stuff to think about wow cottagecore is like it's really hot man it's really hot oh look her bottom oh her, her bottom <laughs> yeah she's really she's really feeling the the weeds you know she's really feeling the pasture <laughs> the pasture the, the meadow let's call it the meadow um, you're welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. I'll see you. You know what? I'm probably going to stream tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. I'm going to test it out and see if, you know, if, if Friday's a good day. I'm testing this out. Do tell folks about it if you had fun. And I'm going to try to tell people. Thanks, Carol. And thanks, everybody. Um, I'm going to try to tell um, uh, people about this particular stream, right? It's full of good stuff. And uh, it, it's probably it's probably pretty fun for for others too. So let them know that it's fun, and I'll see you I'll see you next time. I'll let you know when I'm when I'm streaming next. Bye. You guys are.